Monsters have been part of storytelling for pretty much as long as there have been stories. One of the oldest known stories today is the epic of Gilgamesh, who has to face a terrifying demon in order to gain access to a forbidden forest. This hasn't changed today, and we are still fascinated by these monsters. Maybe even more so than ever. They represent our greatest fears and embody the dread we feel in the face of evil and catastrophe. Monsters allow us to visualize these fears and help us deal with them more easily. This usually plays out in either one of two ways. Option 1, the hero and the monster fight until one of them is defeated. This can for example be seen in stories like Harry Potter, where the mystery and terror of the monster steadily grow until it is finally defeated. Option 2 basically twists this common expectation and upon confrontation the monster turns out to be an ally or not even a monster after all. A great example of this is King Kong, a giant terrifying gorilla that ends up protecting the humans on his island. The world of One Piece is no different and is filled with countless evils and monsters itself that the Straw Hat crew either has to face in battle or ends up fighting alongside with. There is one very special case in the story though that takes a very different approach to the concept of the monster. I think it is fair to say that Chopper is one of the more overlooked members on Luffy's crew. Which is surprising because being a reindeer that ate the human human fruit and that ended up becoming a sweet loving doctor in many ways makes him the most fantastical Nakama on the ship. And yet, despite of this bizarre and extremely unique character concept, Chopper ended up getting less and less attention by the readers as time passed. And as we will find out later, there is one big problem with Chopper's writing that I believe takes a lot of tension out of his character. And it is not what you think it is, because for many people it seems that Chopper has been turned into a sort of cute mascot for the crew. But even if Oda has deliberately turned Chopper into an obvious piece of kawaii merchandise, he's still a well set up and natural feeling character in the way he's presented in the story. As a matter of fact, I will argue that Chopper has the most complete character arc out of all the Straw Hats so far. Therefore, in this video we are going to look at why our cotton candy loving reindeer is a great example of excellent character writing, how his development arc is different from the other Straw Hats and where Oda might have made one big mistake. So who is Chopper and what qualifies him to be a Straw Hat? We first get to meet Tony Tony Chopper on Drum Island, shortly after entering the Grand Line. Chopper grew up as a reindeer in the mountains of the island, where he was treated as an outcast by his herd and even his parents because of his blue nose. When he later ate the human human fruit and suddenly acquired human-like intelligence, he was banished completely from his herd. When trying to communicate with the humans of the island, he was called a monster, chased away and badly wounded. Finally, he was taken in by the good-hearted Dr. Hirolok, who took care of Chopper and inspired him to become a doctor. When Hirolok's health worsened significantly over time though, Chopper set out to find a cure for his newfound father figure. During his search, he encounters his old herd once more and is forced to fight the leader. He manages to win but is heavily wounded in the process again. And after he makes it back to the house, barely alive, out of sheer gratefulness, Hirolok eats the mushroom that Chopper has found, well knowing it contains a deadly poison. He later tragically commits suicide to not burden his son with being the reason for his death. After this once again major blow of destiny, Chopper is then taken in by Dr. Kureha, who tells him the truth about the deadly mushroom, but then goes on to take him in and teach him real medicine in the isolation of a castle. What this shows us right from the beginning is that Chopper has basically been an outcast for all of his life until he meets Luffy. He's a reindeer and a human, and yet seems to be accepted by neither. Both have shown him nothing but violence and hatefulness. In the end, Chopper grew up with the impression of being an abnormity, a monster that doesn't have a place in society. Considering that he's only 15 when joining the crew, I would argue that this counts as a truly tragic backstory. As a result of this, we get introduced to Chopper's character having a couple of clear weaknesses. He has a clear lack of self-confidence, is very shy and has serious trust issues. He also is terribly ashamed and afraid of his devil fruit powers. Giving a character a set of well-explained and compelling weaknesses is important in order to make the development arc interesting and plausible. It helps the reader to identify and empathize with the character and create a story that feels natural and close to reality. In Chopper's case, one could say that he starts off as a timid and naive teenager that has gone through a horrendous childhood. 
If monsters are the embodiment of our fears, then Chopper maybe best embodies our fear of not knowing who we are and where we belong. I would say that this is best symbolized by his monster point, something he can control and fears. After joining Luffy and the crew, he becomes the ship's doctor, making him one of the main characters of the story. His great medical knowledge puts the reindeer in maybe one of the most important roles on board. But besides having to stitch together Luffy every other island, Chopper also has a bunch of other abilities and powers that make him unique in the crew. Being one of the Devil Fruit users on the crew, he is also the only zone type on the ship. This gives him the ability to fight, even though his insecurity and lack of combat experience seem to put him in the lower tiers of the crew in that regard. Amazingly enough though, Chopper was able to use his medical knowledge to create his rumble balls that allow him to control and expand his Devil Fruit transformation to a certain extent. Something that even Dr. Vegapunk seems to have failed to achieve. Especially in Wano, that has a heavy focus on zone type devil fruits, it will be interesting to see whether this will play a major role in the story at some point. Lastly, being an animal himself, Chopper is able to communicate with other animals, which on occasions has proven to be quite useful to the crew over the course of their journey. Closely connected to Chopper's skills and history are also the values that Oda has attributed to his character. Over the course of the journey, we can clearly see that he values kindness and friendship deeply, a feeling that intensifies when traveling with the crew. Having trained under two kind-hearted doctors, Chopper also strongly values science and believes in its good nature. In accordance with this, he also holds the belief that a doctor's duty is to help and save anyone. This set of values fit in smoothly with the rest of the character, making his actions seem authentic and natural. Furthermore, having a character with a clear set of values is important in order to test these values in the confrontation with those of an opponent. All of the Straw Hats are kind, and while this kindness is often tested by the cruelty and evil they encounter in the world, in Chopper's case in particular it is his belief in science that is challenged. Especially his encounters with Hawkback and Caesar are especially interesting, because they also value science, but for different reasons. Giving a character an opponent who values the same thing but from a different viewpoint usually makes for the most interesting conflicts and plot points. Like any other major character, based on these values and his backstory, Chopper also has a desire. A desire is something that the character sets out to fulfill over the course of the story. In the context of One Piece, this is nothing else than the notorious dream that every Straw Hat has. Due to his medical education and his good heart, Chopper's dream is to make the world a better place by becoming a doctor that can cure any disease. Especially in the new world, we have come across a wide range of diseases that would pose a real opportunity for Chopper to prove his skill. Finally, based on his tragic past and the resulting weaknesses for Chopper's character out of this, we now have to look at the psychological need that he has to satisfy over the course of the story. You can think of the psychological need as a serious flaw that is hurting our character in some significant way and is holding him back. The psychological need is something that any developing and interesting character should have. It is something that, alongside the desire, drives the character's arc under the surface until he realizes it is a problem sooner or later. In Chopper's case, this need is laid out very clearly by Oda in the story. Chopper needs to learn to accept and believe in himself. His lack of confidence and identity not only hurt him emotionally, but also hold him back in doing what he wants to do and keep him from being happy. When he joins the Straw Hats on their journey, he also goes on a journey to satisfy this need. This is the premise for his character arc. I think we can agree that this setup makes a lot of sense considering his backstory and how his character was introduced to us. And yet, Oda has made a grave mistake here. And that mistake I've come to believe might be the reason that Chopper appears as uninteresting to many readers compared to the other Straw Hats. Because as we have learned, the psychological need is something affecting the character himself in some significant way. This creates a clear path for development and gives the character a goal that neither he nor the reader might be aware of at the beginning. What makes the character and as a result the plot surrounding him a lot more interesting though is a need that also affects and hurts those around him in some significant way or form. A great example of how this might work is for example Usopp's insecurity. Not only did it badly affect himself, but he also hurt those around him when deciding to leave the crew. 
You can call this the moral need of a character, and you will find it in most of your favorite figures in any story. The big problem with Chopper is, he doesn't have one. Oda has written Chopper's need in a way that makes him struggle all within himself. His timid nature keeps him from projecting his insecurities on others. This makes for a very decent person, but for weaker plot. Which is a pity, because initially Oda actually gave Chopper this hostility towards people. But Chopper's ill feelings towards Luffy and Nami lasted only for a couple of chapters, and it didn't hurt either's feelings. In other words, Chopper lacks an Usopp moment, a situation in which he actively hurt others and as a result had to deal with the consequences. Instead, Chopper's struggle is all on the inside. Now, as I've mentioned before, Chopper is still an amazing and well-written character. But I think that this lack of a moral need in his development arc is the main reason people tend to have a problem with him or downgrade him to nothing more than a mascot. Especially because most of the other Straw Hats have been given a moral need by Oda. So now that we have looked at how Oda has created Chopper, we of course also want to understand how his character has changed over the course of the story. Developing and changing a character is essential in order to keep him relevant and interesting to the story and to give the reader a sense of time flow and impact in regard to the plot. That being said, change doesn't always equal good change. For example, simply making a character stronger or change his appearance will not give the reader any sense of fulfillment. True change involves a challenging and changing of basic beliefs. In other words, it means taking the initial weakness and need of the character and then changing them by making the character go through certain actions and situations. Chopper's character arc, therefore, aims at changing his lack of self-confidence, his trust issues, as well as his naivety and shyness. There are certain categories of change in storytelling, and one that applies best to Chopper in my mind is that of a child changing into an adult. In other words, challenging his beliefs and finding his place in the world. On his journey to define himself, he sees almost anyone on the crew as a role model. The more time he spends with the crew, the more accepted and valued Chopper felt. So much so that upon their reunion after the time skip, Chopper was finally able to completely leave his characterization as a freak behind. The initial mix between his kind and undeniably cute personality and his existence as a kind of biological abomination makes this change the more interesting in my eyes. After the time skip, however, this monster chopper is replaced almost entirely by the cotton candy lover chopper. He is no longer portrayed as a frightening freak of nature and even the literal monster point has been tamed down. And even if you might find monster chopper cooler on the surface though, sweet chopper truly is the natural progression of his character after fully putting the pain of his past behind him. There has always been an underlying sweet element to Monster Chopper, and his development across the series is an uplifting story of him becoming comfortable enough with himself through the help of his friends to allow the cotton candy to overtake the beast. What makes this monster story so different from others is that Chopper doesn't have to choose between being human or being a monster anymore. He was able to accept who he is and still find his place in the world being accepted by his friends. This becomes very clear on Fishman Island, when Chopper transformed into his human point. Sanji points out how he doesn't even look human anymore, to which Chopper responds that he is a monster now. So what can we derive from this? Chopper has apparently been able to change his shyness and insecurity into confidence and positivity. He is no longer fighting with his identity and has also found friends that accept him just the way he is. I would argue at this point that Chopper, as the only straw hat so far, has completed an entire character arc until the time skip. And that has two major implications. On the one hand, I think it shows us that Chopper is a great character. Same as many others, I greatly enjoyed him up until the time skip and I hope you can see now why. On the other hand though, a completed character arc with no new psychological or moral need has rendered Chopper meaningless in the new world. Until Whole Cake Island, that is. And here my hopes have been going up immensely lately. Because after leaving Zoe to go and save Sanji together with Luffy, Chopper finally seems to have started a new development arc. After completing his change from child to adult, I think we can now see clear signs that Chopper is starting to change from an adult to a leader. At this point, a quick warning, if you don't want to be spoiled for Whole Cake Island or Wano, just skip ahead a bit now. Ready? Okay. 
The first instance of this new character arc we can see in Chopper's relationship with Carrot, in which he takes the role of the big brother. This puts him in the situation to guide and take care of someone for the very first time, but also the way he acts in Whole Cake Island, supporting Luffy smartly and being an asset much rather than a hindrance shows us that something is going on here. Chopper takes the initiative more and more. The latest example of this is the amazing job he did in guiding the Yonko Big Mom to Udon Prison to break out Luffy after her memory loss. I would go so far as to say that Chopper's new need might be that of lacking leadership qualities, and he's slowly working towards gaining them. I definitely have high hopes for our reindeer and I truly hope that he will get the character arc that he truly deserves. I think that Chopper has so much more potential than simply being a mascot. He is one of the best monsters in storytelling after all. A cotton candy monster. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. Before you run off and get yourself some cotton candy, I would first love to hear your opinion on Chopper. Do you think he's an interesting character or not, and why so? And where do you see his character arc going in the future? As always, share your thoughts in the comments below. At this point, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. Your pledges mean a lot to me. If you are interested in helping me make more and better videos, you can find the link to my page in the description below. You will get free access to all of my artwork and early access to my major videos. Thanks for your support. Also, if you liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to be notified for any future content of mine. Or dislike, don't share and unsubscribe. It's a free world, people. I hope to see you around next time and until then, have a great week. Oh yeah, and don't forget to turn your notifications on. YouTube can sometimes be forgetful. Bye!